Hello traders at CMC Markets. This is my update for Friday the 17th of November. I am Trevor Neal of RRG. Today we're going to look at global stock indices and there's a very striking pattern uh, on that. We're going to choose an index and an index pair that we like very much, in particular like very much. Then I'm going to come down to four stocks, which I like very much, and two. One in particular is a pullback opportunity, and the other is a uh, really rampant, uh, strong stock. So let's get going. We start with a look at the relative rotation graphs of major world indices versus the MSCI world itself. It's a bit of a all over the place picture and all sorts of directions, but easterly or westerly or heading southerly. So it's a very mixed picture. But on the right hand side of the 100 level, so up on a relative basis, outperforming the MSCI world, we've got the, we've got the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ and the FANG. So we've got all the US indices on the right hand side. Also the Nifty, the FTSE and the Nikkei. Then on the left hand side here, we've got all the other European stock indices, plus the Australian and the poor old Hang Seng there. The picture though becomes very interesting indeed when we drop down from a weekly sampling to a daily sampling. Now here we've got in the shorter term picture a very strong message from this. Can you see that uh, we've got indices heading northeasterly with long tails and indices heading southwesterly with long tails. We've got here the uh, FANG, the NASDAQ, we've got the S&P all heading in this strong direction here, the, the FANG the strongest of all, the biggest tail of all and the NASDAQ too. The, the Dow still okay in that it is outperforming, but the direction of it is southwest. That's the wrong direction. In it joins. What have we got here? Stocks, DAX, CAC, and the FTSE. And the FTSE really in the furthest to the left here. So the greatest relative underperformance is just really just not moving while everything else is moving up. Hang Seng is definitely in a downtrend, but we've got Europe here a little bit stubborn and going the wrong way on a relative basis. So it's got, we've got a clear message here, US markets, in particular the tech stocks, the FANG stocks and the NASDAQ versus, you could do a pairs trade versus European indices, in particular the FTSE. So the best would be one of the FANG constituents versus the FTSE or the NASDAQ versus, versus the FTSE. It's a very strong message indeed. You don't really see it very often like that. So in so much of a kind of straight line with a clear message of US stocks northeasterly, European stocks southwesterly. Be long America, in particular the indices, be short or out of uh, the European uh, stocks, in particular the FTSE. Starting with the NASDAQ, you can see JDKK ratio and momentum are both soaring here. It's very strong indeed. And in fact, it's very close to its July high at 15,000. It was, and we're, as I record this, we're testing that high now. We had a big gap as we broke that previous high resistance, and we're surging up very strongly indeed. We can see this in the MACD, gap widening here. It's got momentum, it should break this um, uh, high, the July high with relative ease, and then we'll be looking up 16,000. Uh, 700 um, high to be tested after that and with good support below. On the RSI we've got uh, it's very strong pointing upwards still strong momentum on the upside yes this should break and should push on further. Traders might trade go long for the break with a protective stop and a, a at an attempt to fill the gap. The gap is from 15,746 to 15,575, but really I would take this level as the other side of the gap, 15,602, and that could be your protective area for a swing towards the high. Uh, moving to the S&P, you can see here that the R 
RG lines, the momentum and ratio, both pointing up very strongly here as the market soars. It had drifted back in a pretty parallel shape, a flag shape here, um, but it's broken up from that flag and re returned to the long-term uptrend. It is facing resistance just ahead, as I record this, at 4,533. And then if that breaks, which given the momentum, which I'll show in a second, it probably will, we could be going up to 4,603 high uh, there from July. The um, MACD we like very much. The gap is widening here. It's um, between them and they're both pointing up very strongly and the RSI making a new high and pointing up to. This should break that, um, this latest nearby resistance and given the amount of momentum and increasing rate of change of speed on the upside, it should be ready to take out the 4,600 top as well. In contrast, let's look at the uh, FTSE. It's got a series of lower highs in place here. It's trade, it's churning around in a range around the 7,500 level. There's plenty of resistance above 7,700, 7,750, and then here at 7,300, and very significant three bottoms here at 7,200. But it's looking really poor. It's just stuck in a range and this inability to, to do anything up or down has made it the worst performer against other stock markets. Yes, the other European stock markets have improved a, a bit, but this just won't move. And compared, as we saw on the ROG chart, to the soaring American indices, this is, is an anchor, a drag uh, to global uh, stock markets. Uh, we saw the position of the Nikkei on our, our graph up in the uh, right hand side top right hand side and uh, look at this here now it's uh we've had a series of lower highs high lower high lower high and we're tackling that right now it is pushing ahead very strong indeed here we can see the um, rs ratio is uh, is uh, soaring ahead but beware a little bit of loss of momentum here remember it all the uh, momentum uh, precedes price and uh, so that's a little bit of a warning here. But otherwise, we've got a brilliant looking uh, MACD with the gap widening there, momentum increasing, and the RSI uh, pretty strong as well. So provided we don't falter right here, then I think we're, this is a breakout. It's not quite a flag, uh, but it's a flag uh, shape. And we've got a flag pole here. So the potential is substantial on the upside if we are clearing this. The only Flying the ointment is that uh, uh, relative rotation, JDK momentum is turning over a, a little bit, so stalling a little bit, but that's uh, natural when you're at a resistance point. As I write, uh, some of the Fang Plus uh, stocks have, uh, are having sharp reversals at resistance points. So let's have a look at that and see where the prospects, the best prospects are in this sector, which is the this area this group of stocks which is the uh, driver of the stock market uh, upwards but uh, let's beware of ones which are approaching heavy resistance areas now let's uh, quickly go through the uh, charts of the main uh, fang plus stocks and we're starting with nvidia now nvidia um, has uh, hit the resistance at uh, five 01, 500, the round number, um, and it has backed off quite sharply at that resistance point. It's looking good from an ROG uh, point, point of view, but and just a slight narrowing in the MACD lines here, but the uh, RSI has come down, topped out. Maybe one of these tops, like we've seen before, is in place. If we do come off, then I would expect support to come in at here at three at four seven six. Let me just draw that in there, which is probably going to present a very good buy opportunity. But at this moment, it's suffering from resistance. Moving on to Tesla. Now Tesla is really ranging, and it's mid-range, two hundred to. To, to 70 to 80 area and it is also a little bit weak at this very moment in time and but overall it's looking strong but this has got lots of resistance ahead of it particularly intense from 240 up to 280 so that's not such a good opportunity 
Now Netflix I like. Now Netflix has broken through 450. It's powering ahead. Look at the MACD here, gap widening here, very strong indeed. And then it looks as though it's getting ready to go to the 480 high. And I just want to bring this in here. That, that 480 high is a significant support level or resistance level from going back into 2020. Now Amazon too has been rebuffed with big bearish engulfing line candle here at significant historic resistance. The gap between the MACD lines is starting to narrow quite sharply and the RSI has curved down, come down through 65 from above. But I think this again uh, possibly is ready to come back down to support from this high here, um, which is at uh, 134. I do expect that will probably possibly drift back to there and then stabilize there and, and start to go up again. Then Google, Google's going ahead strongly towards resistance. It hasn't stalled at all compared to the other ones. Look at the other ones of having those big things like bearish engulfing patterns, but not here. It's uh, soaring away. The MACD gap is widening. It's really looking good. Now Microsoft, this is looking great. This is making a new high. It's broken the, the high of July at uh, 366, bursting forward, looking great on the MACE. Look at that gap widening, that wide gap widening there um, on the ROG lines. Look at that amazing um, uh, relative strength there. And then the RSI also a little slight loss of momentum in here, but um, it's still holding up very well. Uh, we could expect some slowing up of this sort of meteoric uh, rise. If it comes back, then it, 366 is probably where it's going to hold. Meta made the break out of these two highs here at 326, surged ahead, gapped up, but then has had that big reversal outside day or bearish engulfing line and it's on its way back to support. And the support is at the break point 326. And it should be well supported there and present an opportunity ahead. So the, the MACD is looking good. And the RSI has come down as you would expect, not yet quite broken through 65, which for me is a key level. But it, I would not be surprised to see this stabilize around the current levels and then for another attempt to break through the high at 3.3. And finally, Apple. Apple has surged from the low at the end of last month and has come up to resistance. And at this very moment, it's got a kind of an iffy candle. Yes, I guess this candle too had re rejection in it. On the ROG lines, we have got some loss of momentum here at this resistance point. So that indicates we may stop here or even reverse at this point and find it hard to pass right through this round number of 190. The next level, if we do get through that, we will have good support and then it would uh, indicate that we were heading to 198. The, the MACD lines here, they look great. Uh, RSI, it also still looks great, but we have to watch the behavior here and the with the little bit of evidence we've got, it does look as though it might stall here. I thank you all very much indeed for listening. It's uh, always an honour that you do. My name is Trevor Neal um, of ROG Research. Uh, have a great day and may the trend be with you. Bye bye.